Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. Hertz, you may recall, is that rental company that kept popping up in the news because it seems that there was a disproportionate number of their customers being arrested after Hertz would report the cars stolen that they had rented out to people. And so I did a whole bunch of stories about that. And then I, I forgot what the last story was, but they had done something extraordinary. And I said, okay, I can't imagine that they can ever top this one. So this will probably be the last story I do about Hertz. And I was wrong. And I, I should never say those things. Because <laughs> I somehow caused the universe to create this story just to prove me wrong. All kinds of people sent me this one because they know how much I love them Hertz stories. Hertz apologizes after refusing to rent a car to a customer from Puerto Rico. So it's reported widely. I decided to grab a version from The Guardian because, of course, The Guardian is from over there. And I love to see the stories written by people who are not from America because they, they can kind of lean into this a little bit better than we can. A worker at the rental chain demanded to see the American man's passport, apparently unaware that Puerto Rico is part of the U.S. Uh, the U.S. rental car giant Hertz now has apologized. So this did happen. And, and, and you know, every now and then in the old days, you'd hear a story and somebody go, this is what happened when I went to the store, I went to this business. And they go, no, it didn't. No, no, what, the guy made that up. No, no, here, they've apologized. They, 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 there's no question, this happened. This did happen. They've apologized. And they've pledged to retrain their staff, presumably on geography, <laughs> After an employee denied a customer from Puerto Rico a prepaid vehicle on the mistaken belief that he was from a foreign country and needed a passport. And this is all happening in New Orleans. During the encounter with a customer at the Louis Armstrong International Airport, the Hertz employee also called over law enforcement who threatened to turn the man over to immigration, <laughs> even though Puerto Rico has been a U.S. territory since, oh, about 1898. So I understand that it takes a while for news like that to catch up with the rest of the population. But you'd think by now, since 1898, uh, it could have gotten out there. Um, so this was reported by several people, including a correspondent for CBS, who published the story on Twitter and Instagram over the weekend, and then all kinds of agencies picked it up. And so the man's story vividly illustrates the prejudice many of the U.S.'s 53 million Spanish speakers face. Uh, he recently traveled to New Orleans and ahead of his trip prepaid to rent a car for Hertz at the Armstrong Airport. After arriving, he went to the Hertz counter and presented his Puerto Rican driver's license, which contains text in both languages spoken on that island, which are Spanish and English. The clerk then said to him, we will need a passport. We'll need a passport. He told the reporter that after he asked the woman what she meant, she made remarks that suggested he was from another country and therefore needed a passport. See, if you're a U.S. citizen, you can rent the car with identification. If you're from another country, you need to show your passport. Duh. <laughs> so it turns out the man is actually, believe it or not, a U.S. citizen. And he was traveling domestically, meaning that he'd flown from one part of the U.S. to another part of the U.S. And he did not have his passport on him. So he urged the woman to honor his reservation. Uh, and he did record interaction here on his cell phone. So there's video of this. But the clerk refused. So he said, you're denying me because I have a driver's license, which is a valid ID? It's a valid ID. It's a valid ID, and, he, and he, he repeated that a couple of times to indicate it is, in fact, a valid ID. So the woman turned her way, holding a clipboard and pen as she walked, and said, I need you to go about your business. Go about your business. She apparently said that four times. Apparently, if you say go about your business four times, a person will disappear, I guess. I don't know. So he replied, it's a valid ID. It's a prepaid reservation. The woman then said, would you like me to call the police? Would you? So <laughs> we've all heard of these stories about Karens who want to speak to the manager. What happens when the manager is a Karen? Oh, then she says, I'll call the police. See, that's, <laughs> that's what happens. The woman then said, would you like me to call the police? And the man said, yes, please call the police. Because he's hoping the police will show up and go, um, 
you do realize Puerto Rico is in the U.S., right? To her. It's not what they did, though. So the woman pulled a cell phone out of her pocket and called an officer who then told this man he needed to leave. According to this man, as the officer then left, he threatened to call Border Patrol. So this man interpreted that as a remark that he was in the U.S. illegally somehow, despite the fact that he is actually an American citizen. I may have mentioned that earlier, but it's worth noting. And the Hertz clerk and the officer presumably also are American citizens. We don't know that for sure. So meanwhile, the reporter who covered the story also described this man, believe it or not, as a federal law enforcement officer of 25 years. So (laughs) he's from Puerto Rico, but he actually worked for the feds for a while. And it turns out that if you look up his LinkedIn profile, uh, he was an assistant deputy chief mental health specialist, an officer in a U.S. probation office, and that's before he retired. So he's retired now, but he actually at one point in time worked for the federal government. So the officer at the airport belonged to the police department patrolling Kenner, the suburban New Orleans city where the airport's actually located. Spokesperson for the department said the agency reviewed the officer's body camera and didn't hear a remark like the one described by this man. But it turns out that the officer turned off his body camera and it's unclear when exactly he turned it off. So, of course, this man is saying that the comment was made about Border Patrol, but they're disputing that. Meanwhile, the Kenner police spokesperson invited this man to file a complaint with the agency, and they said, if you do that, we will investigate it. Now, Hertz didn't immediately respond to a request for comment from the Guardian. The company apologized to the man and issued him a refund. So they actually refunded his money which makes sense since he had paid them and got nothing for his money. And it turns out that they refunded his money after being asked about his experience by this reporter. And this reporter has something the effect of a quarter of a million followers on both Twitter and Instagram. And so Hertz then issued a statement uh, provided to Guardian. Hertz accepts Puerto Rican driver's licenses from our customers renting in the U.S. without requiring a valid passport. We are reinforcing our policies with employees to ensure that they are understood and followed consistently across their location. So they say they do accept these licenses. These driver's licenses are acceptable. The only problem is they didn't accept this guy's. And so you can say you've got a policy of doing something. If your people aren't implementing the policy, that's the problem. When asked about the employment status of the clerk who denied this man's reservation, a Hertz spokesperson told the Guardian the employee has been reminded of the standing policy related to Puerto Rican driver's licenses. Uh, Meanwhile, in case you're curious about this, um, the U.S. is home to the world's second largest population of Spanish speakers, despite English being the most common language. It trails only Mexico, a country of 127 million people, whose official language is, in fact, Spanish. And they're pointing that out because of the fact that the man's driver's license from Puerto Rico has writing on it in Spanish. And so if somebody just glanced at it, they might go, oh, this is not an American passport. It's got Spanish on it. But of course, that's what they do for a driver's license in Puerto Rico. So it's a crazy story, but we hear about things like this quite a bit. The other one we often hear about is people who are trying to spend $2 bills. I don't know why. This just reminds me of that. But the U.S. does issue currency in all the common denominations, you know, 1, 5, 10, 20, and so on. But they actually do issue $2 bills. And they're very uncommon. uh, And they've never quite caught on in the sense that they'd like them to because the thinking was that if more people used twos, uh, it would save money of having to print up all those ones. And then, of course, people don't like them because they look funny and and and, and they're not used to them. And so every now and then you hear what somebody goes into a store and tries to pay with a $2 bill. And somebody goes, what's this? It's a $2 bill. Oh, I think I heard a joke about it. It's like phony is a $2 bill. No, no, it's phony is a $3 bill. (laughs) Got to get your jokes straight. And I've actually heard of somebody who's had the police called on them for trying to spend a $2 bill. And I believe, I could be wrong on this, but I believe I've heard people being arrested or at least initially detained until somebody came along and said, um, that's a real dollar bill. It's just a two, not a one. 
What? And the crazy part is that all you'd have to do is Google it and figure out that a $2 bill is real or that Puerto Rico is real. <laughs> it's not that Puerto Rico is not real. It's just a question of whether it's another country. And so there is a misunderstanding, apparently, among some people who don't know that there are the 50 states, right? But then also you got Washington, D.C. You know, now, of course, if somebody whipped out a Washington, D.C., you know, District of Columbia driver's license, I assume they have them, uh, is someone going to go, oh, that's not a state? Well, no, they'll probably recognize that, right? What about Guam? What about Guam? U.S. Virgin Islands, you know. So there are places that are not states that are part of the United States. And so somebody needs to learn that. But I will also tell you, I don't think I've ever rented from Hertz. I've rented from other car companies. And uh, I get the impression that the counter people, people who work the counters these places, are pretty much about the same level of both uh, training and, and job responsibility as the people who work the counter at McDonald's. And I'm not insulting anybody here. I'm simply pointing out that if you go to McDonald's, you get a certain standard of service at the counter. And I, I think that that person at the counter at McDonald's has about the same amount of training as the person manning the counter at Hertz. Uh, and so the real question then is, you probably do need to tell them that you require a passport from other countries. But just to be clear, Puerto Rico, Guam, U.S. Virgin Islands, Washington, D.C. are not other countries. And pro tip, neither is New Mexico. <laughs> They've got a New Mexico now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so there you go. Hertz apologizes after refusing a rental car to a customer from Puerto Rico from The Guardian and sent me by a ton of people. We'll see if that's the last time Hertz is in the news, but you and I both know it ain't. It ain't. Questions or comments, put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Lato's Law. You're not obligated to win. You're obligated to keep trying to do the best you can every day.